Hello, friends. Welcome back to Wealth Week. First up, we have a boom Ripple partner, ACI Worldwide, which supports 9% of global SWIFT traffic, has confirmed that the new instant payments regulation will come into effect on the 8th of April, 2024. So mark this date on your calendar, my friends. Next, we have Ripple partner Onafric, which covers all of Africa through the Pan-African Payment Settlement System and utilizes XRP for transfers, is tackling a $2.7 trillion market. Onafric, the Pan-African Payment System, which is a private sector innovation is responsible for linking 500 million mobile wallets across 40 countries. Onifrix integrated network redefines cross-border transactions, making payments seamless and effortless across the continent. And we have from Amelie Breaking, Wall Street expert Linda Pajon says she's lucky to have XRP at low prices and to accumulate. Pay close attention to this video. But like I said earlier in the show, XRP has the opportunity to do a 10x and still be less valuable from a market cap perspective than Ethereum is today. So while we had you on the show, I just wanted to show you this correlation and get your thoughts. Does this scream opportunity to you or what's your perspective when you're looking at this data? Oh, we are so lucky to still have low prices and be able to accumulate. I, you know, I just think don't worry about the price. The price will take care of itself. Mm -hmm. Remember, we have the private ledgers going on that the banks are using. We have 400 banks that have contracted with Ripple. We have private ledgers that are being used for those banks to, to run money. Every so often we get a glitch with a really high number, which to me is a stress test of that money that eventually will transfer onto the main ledger. So we have high prices ahead of us. We also have another video for Brad Garlinghouse, Accumulate, Accumulate, and Accumulate. Let's take a look at this. From the get-go, Ripple has worked with regulators, and we have worked with regulated institutions like banks, where there isn't regulatory uncertainty. And so we have found that part of the reason why XRP has performed well is because people realize, hey, wait a minute. You know, back to your question, is, is XRP the next Bitcoin? Back to your question, is, is XRP the next Bitcoin? If we work with the system to solve this problem and we can solve that problem at scale, a problem measured in the trillions of dollars, then there's a lot of opportunity to create value in XRP. Moving on, on March 22nd, Indusin Bank announced, we plan to leverage the Ripple platform to provide an enhanced experience to our clients by delivering instant settlements and confirmations on the back of a highly secure infrastructure. We also have Thune's Ripple Payments partner announces an expanding partnership with Visa to target emerging markets across Asia and Africa. The partnership began last year and continues to grow and expand with digital wallets into more regions globally. Last but absolutely not at least Marianne Weber, Standard Chartered Bank, mentioned Ripple in the European Parliament. Let's take a look at this. So I would like to start this time with Mariana asking her, because he, he used to be regulator, do you see a future without clearing houses? <coughs> that's, that, <laughs> that's, that's, a really, that's a really big question. And, and uh, yeah, one of the points I was going to make is, we, we can talk about regulatory issues, I think, until the cows come home, because th there are there are some issues, I think, to, to Peter's point. Uh, the, 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 the significance of those, I think, it might differ depending on your, 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 your view and your opinion. But I think re regulation is certainly not, in my opinion, the, the biggest or the only blocker to these markets scaling. Um, I think one of the issues that's actually maybe slightly less spoken about, and to answer your question, Demetrius, there, there are inherent conflicts of interest present in this to, to, to help these, to, which prevent, I think, these markets scaling. That there are parts of the market, frankly, which may stand to be disintermediated if this technology takes off in the way many of us think it it will. Um, so I hope that's um, <laughs> I hope that's my diplomatic way of, of answering uh, your your question, um, um, Demetrius. But I think so something else I just want to say about the, the regulation and to your point, Peter, about crypto assets and the attitude towards crypto assets. I think Standard Chartered is, is, is maybe a slight outlier here in that our, our fee, we do have live crypto asset initiatives, and I'm talking crypto assets here, not tokenized um, traditional assets. We already have a live crypto asset custodian and a live crypto asset um, brokerage and exchange, again, through our Standard Chartered Ventures arms, and we will soon be launching crypto asset custody um, in Dubai as well. Um, and the reason for that, we don't necessarily think crypto assets is the end game. We are sort of, I think, aligned with other with other peers in that we do think tokenized traditional assets is 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 more the end game. But 
the learning that we've gone through as an institution through getting these crypto assets um, initiatives off the ground and frankly that's where the liquidity is at the, at the moment and, and hence there is some commercial opportunity there. The, the learning that we've gone through from a risk management perspective is, um, is really quite something and I think about our first foray into crypto assets which was our first investment in Ripple in 2016 and our, our whole risk management framework in regards to digital assets has, has incrementally enhanced year on year the learning that we've gone through has been um, hugely, hugely valuable, and we hope sort of sets us up in, in pretty good stead. So I think the, um, what, what, so the, the point I'm coming to is the, the regulatory attitudes and I think the political um, rhetoric around crypto assets and digital assets is, is actually possibly more important than the actual regulation itself. Um, we have not yet come across any genuine regulatory blockers that have prevented us from moving forward in the endeavours that we we want to explore. Um, but it's the the attitude and the openness of, of regulators and policymakers, which I think is is really really um, crucial uh, for, for for innovation. Um, yeah, that's what I'll say there. All right, friends, that's for the video. If you found it insightful, don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe, and share it with your friends. Thank you for watching. I'll catch you in the next one.